The organization is Soccer Without Boundaries. It started in 2010 with Jean-Claude Munizemu, who lived in this area and just realized that the kids were getting into trouble and didn't have things to do on a Saturday. Our main goal is integrating immigrant children, also children who don't have a means uh, to play sport uh, into society using soccer is very important because whatever children join in, whether it's a gang or other things, they need to belong in. And so he just brought a soccer ball out to the screen space behind us and just started getting kids involved. Uh, basically, it's connect these children who otherwise would be isolated to their community. Okay, so uh, you go with Marta in Marta's team. she show you where to shoot the ball, and you are with Yakub. Yakub, okay? Yakub, show her where to shoot. Remember, she doesn't speak English that much, but she understands, okay? My, oh! May speaks Arabic. Okay, May, can you te tell her where she's gonna shoot the ball? I think we have about 19 different countries. If they're coming from a refugee camp or another country, and there, there's a lot of things to learn and to adjust to. So many people know the rules of soccer. It's not a hard sport, and you definitely don't need to speak English to play it so it's very universal so easy for kids to pick up and like you just you're part of a team and it's a lot of teamwork involved so it's great for the kids. Today beside the having soccer practice we had to sign up for our August soccer, soccer camp. Even though the camp has been going for a few years it's been um, completely volunteer run and just done on a shoestring. This year we got a Soul of the City grant which is great. Each kid will get their own jersey with a logo on it, so they have a sense of belonging, they'll get a water bottle. From when kids put on the jersey, they can say, I am a soccer player. So having that and making all of those contacts is something that the kids, they will never forget. The lunch is provided and snacks are provided. And at the end of the week, they'll get um, a barbecue and the entire community will be, well, as many people as we can in the community will join us. Um, and then the kids will meet other people, the parents will meet other people in the community. They'll get to know each other a bit better and it just helps with everyone to become more integrated in their new home. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great week. We're going to end it with a barbecue, which is going to be a lot of fun. Soccer is cheap, accessible, and you can play it anywhere. Go pick up your t-shirt. How old are you? Five? You're going in grade one? Okay, yep, go get your t-shirt. So today is Monday, August 8th, beginning of our 2016 soccer camp. At the beginning is a chaos. Uh, the, every child will try to find their t-shirt and their name and the water bottle. So this camp goal is to make other people smile by passing the ball to them instead of trying to take all the shots yourself. So how do we make the world a better place? One person at a time, I smile at you, you're smiling, all of a sudden you smile at somebody else, they're smiling. Do we have children who are very new to Canada? and we have children who are very new in the soccer camp. However, we have experience to deal with that. Um, I'm Mary, I'm a soccer camp leader here um, at Soccer Without Boundaries. Um, today's Monday, the first day of soccer camp. We're gonna be going across the field to go play soccer and like try to make their skill sets better. This is my second year as a leader. I've been here for three years. My first year was as a kid. So these children, they used to be young, playing soccer with us. We call them small group leaders. Part of that is a mentorship and leadership training process so that when they want to go for a job, they can ask us and we can write them a letter of reference. Daniela is a coach on this side. She's uh, looking after grade one to grade three. She came when she was uh, 10 years old. Nigeria, yeah, we came in 2009. I'm usually a really outgoing person, but when I first came, it was kind of like a new like, environment for me. I didn't really feel welcomed, I guess, by my friends at school and stuff. So when I got here, I found like a sport I was able to participate in. I was really good at soccer back home, so I was like, okay, I can do this. 
I am a migrant myself. I know how hard it is to make a friend when you are new. Somebody once told me that a typical immigrant can be in Canada 10 years before they make their first Canadian friend. People make a friend according to what they have in common. And I started to meet more people and they make more friends and it made me more comfortable. I was able to learn from people, like learn about the culture here and everything. She's going next fall, she's going to play soccer at the University of North Dakota on the scholarship. They're paying for all my schooling, all my housing, books and everything, and uh, plus they're giving me spending money. Thanks to Daniela, the kids, they know that you can get a scholarship to go to university when you play uh, soccer. I can't wait to see what else is to come, so excited. The improvement, they get to know, to learn more from another culture, the way we come from, the girls that are not playing soccer. And now we are here, the girls are playing, and they love that too, for me, is that one is the good part. <laughs> It teaches my kids that kids are kids, and it doesn't matter what language they speak, and it doesn't matter where they come from. They all have the ability to play and have fun, and they figure out ways to communicate, regardless of where they come from. I don't remember his name, but yeah, he's really nice. I made two smiles. No, I made five. Second. Five. On our last day, we will have uh, police and kids playing soccer game. We've invited the Calgary police soccer team to come and play against our kids. Police are big and strong, kids are fast and skilled. So that'll be great, and then we're gonna have a ceremony where the kids receive medals, then we have a barbecue. So it's gonna be wonderful. So they say it's take a village to raise a kid, but it's very hard to make a friend in Canada because we don't have a town square where people go and meet. This is why we make uh, this club, town square, where these children can meet, then they make a friendship. From there, they can exchange information. Yeah, so Friday today is the last day of camp and we will have a soccer game uh, between the kids and some police officers and we'll also have a barbecue following that. Oh, um, so we're going to play soccer against, against the, the police. police. So, uh, for example, children from FG camp, police in the camp, they are there to make sure that the refugees don't leave the camp. They, they stay there, so there is a kind of... Uh, Really confrontation every day. No. I, I know one. I, I know one. One come to my school. You're saying, but I forgot what her name is. I don't know. And uh, also police are allowed to steal from refugees. They have uh, no right and nothing. So it's good for these children to come here and see, yeah, this is different place. Actually, police are friendly. They can play soccer. Yeah, I've played soccer probably most of my life. So I kind of like playing the game. Uh, despite the fact I'm from South, South, South America, sorry, I'm Colombia, I, I, not that great, <laughs> not that great, so I'm a little uh, apprehensive right now. <laughs> I'm really excited and nervous because they're probably really good at soccer. Me too. And I'm really bad. We have a children who are still not sure how they're going to, you know, play with the big and strong police officers. Well, I, I heard they're very good, uh, good by the way, and uh, we're kind of nervous right now to play against them. I told them that they've been practicing for four days. There is a chance police, they've been just driving around. Unfortunately, as you can tell, uh, I'm getting a little bit gray in the tooth, so I'm getting a little bit slower. Uh, for speed and experience, gonna win the game. So really, this is a big community event, so there's always value when you can bring the community together and show our youth what the importance is and that they're actually part of that community. We're not gonna go easy on them. Maybe I can make a windfield around them. <laughs> Some of these kids come from communities and from countries where, where police is not seen as an ally, as a friend. Uh, to be able to play with them and interact with them in this way, getting close to them, it, it snowballs in, in the way that they go home and tell their parents. So for them to get to know me and for me to get eventually get to know their parents is, is big. At the end of the day, 
our parents from Afghanistan talking to parents from Somalia and uh, parents from Saskatchewan. They will have in common as their kids are playing soccer, so you meet in the soccer field. Well done, Danielle, and thank you for all your hard work. It's really important. It's really important that we have this relationship with our community, the police and the community here in Calgary. This is how soccer can build a village. I'm really proud of these kids, so it makes me smile.